With the soon to come Void 3.0 update that will massively change how the Void subclasses will act and be used in game, now is a great time to get in as many Void builds as you can so you can be the first to try them out and see what crazy combinations you can put together and work with. So to make your lives easier, I have a perfect Controverse hold build and Telesto build that will net you a big amount of damage like you've never seen before, but it's going to allow you to survive more and provide oodles of support via the elemental wells, which is how the build will allow you to survive all encounters with ease. Although it's not a common build to run if you ever venture into Grandmasters to master content, from my playtime experience with it and how it works with protection being provided and enhancing our abilities further, this build does have a lot to show when used in the right manner and can easily be used in any to all endgame content as you're still going to be providing the necessary support that your team will need to survive on. I think of it like this, it's like if you're playing as a Paladin class in most RPGs and you want to go absolutely ham in terms of damage but also be able to support yourself and your team efficiently, then this is the best build for that style but in a more simpler format. If this sounds Warrior of Light enough for you, then I recommend that you carry on watching as I will unload the good stuff for you. So before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then I would really appreciate a like and a sub as it does go a long way for me. For the subclass, we shall be using the Tomb of Chaos for both its super and the Chaos Accelerant Grenade perk which we will be making full use of when combined with the Controverse Hold Exotic. Both Chaos Accelerant and Controverse Hold are two of the most common and best setups that you will ever use because of how powerful and synergized the two can be. A controversial hold on their own allows us to not only receive reduced damage by charging our grenades, but also give back a random amount of grenade energy upon using it. How much you get back varies from time to time, as you can get all your grenade energy back from a single combatant taken out, while on the other hand, you may get a quarter to half back with the rest being made up via the elemental wells collected. The Chaos Accelerant will grant players increased grenade damage while charging them which together will overall make your grenades both lethal and rewarding for the payout they provide. Just alone, your grenades can be pulling off some hefty numbers that will be enough to weaken or outright kill any champion that's caught within it and while also granting you grenade energy back. Like I mentioned before, to make this build really work in your favour, mods such as Elemental Ordnance, Bountiful Well and Explosive Wellmaker will be fully used to support the build even more. My plan is to use the worlds created by my grenades and Telesto to support my abilities when they are low, but also grant me protection via the protective line mod so we always have guaranteed protection wherever we go. As such a simple setup is designed to make you solo survive a lot of the tough content without needing to rely on your super to activate the same goal. Add in parkour deconstruction or any debuff mod to the mix and you'll have a new favourable build to use from this season onwards. Now weaponry for the build should cater to whatever ending content you dive into. So for this I've gone with a common and streamlined setup capable of taking out whatever combatants you face. My primary for example is the Biogen Winds bow with Swashbuckler and Killing Wind, which is a great bow to have when facing the minor to major combatants as we can build up stacks of damage quickly while also benefiting from the Killing Wind perk. A very easy to get bow that you can grind from doing the Empire Hunts missions, the weapon comes with a wide selection of perk options that can make it lethal to use in both PvE or PvP. This bow is going to be great against overload champs you face and with the consistent damage build up you gain from using your bow over time, you can pretty much tackle all types of battens if you land a bow hit via critical or body. If possible, try and gain one with rapid hit and explosive rounds as they are great for consistently stunning targets one after another, or alternatively, get one with sympathetic arsenal as this perk can reload our stowed weapons. And as I have weapons such as Telesto or any other fusion rifle in mind, it means that you can pull them out with a full magazine there and then without the hassle of needing to reload them. For second G, we have the Telesto that's going to be doing a number of things for the build. Ideally, Telesto will be used to debuff combatants with the Park or Deconstruction mod at every chance it gets, while also stunning unstoppables as well. However, it's also going to be playing a major role in creating worlds as we go along via the Explosive Wellmaker mod which in turn will grant us the protective light buff as well. As Telesto projectiles are considered explosive, we can trigger the explosive world maker mod back to back while taking on everyone we face. This is important as when combined with the controversial hold and the bloom ability in the subclass as well, we can create about 4 to 6 worlds in one go and this will be a huge benefit to us and our team. Only issue with using the world maker mod is that the worlds produced will be solar only, which isn't a big issue as we will still gain the benefits as described but the amount of energy we get back for abilities won't be a lot compared to the Void counterpart. Still, with what we have going on, the pros will outweigh the cons once in action. 
For heavy, anything that you choose will be fine for this section as you may be changing heavies every now and then, and depending on the encounters you face. Ideally, sticking with a linear fusion will be best as you can optimize the particle deconstruction mod more often. However, using the Ascendancy or the Hothead rocket launcher with explosive light is another great choice to pick as your weapons will be producing orbs of light constantly, which you can then turn into more power on your end and one shot champions at any level at your disposal. Now for the stats, we need to focus on both survival and damage over time to allow us to retain our superiority while on the field. The key to this will be to rely on mods being used which are, as explained earlier, will play a massive role throughout. How this affects your stats now will vary on what you consider the most important stat to invest in. For example, our recovery stat has been pushed up to 80 so we can recover quickly when in and out combat. However, this is only the case because of my armor stats alone are causing this one stat to come out so high and we do also have the controversial hold available that will be granted as protection the moment we use our exotic, so the defensive capabilities are all there. Also, with the protective light mod providing me a massive damage reduction upon its activation, it means we don't need to invest so heavily in the stats unless you plan to be taking the lead. For this, I applied the elemental charge mod so I can still use wells without needing to separate the entirety of the build too much when using protective light, which is something I do recommend you do as well. For our discipline, this is going to be another important area to invest in as this will be activating our wells non-stop, but also granting us a large amount of super energy which will link into our intellect stat as well. Although I have this area at 60, this is all part of the plan as we have controversy hold available which will be granting us further energy return upon success. Upon this random application, this sort of can provide us with a full, half or quarter amount of grenade energy depending on how successful the grenade hits. As this can be somewhat unreliable, I have decided to add in further support to the whole of our abilities just in case. A Bountiful Well will grant us times 2 worlds upon any Elemental 1 monster that can create them, Elemental Ordnance will allow us to create worlds via grenades, and Explosive Well Maker will allow us to create even more worlds via explosive methods such as grenades, grenade launchers or telesto. These mods will grant you the substantial amount of energy you need to achieve your goal of always being sustainable. Lastly, Intellect will play a role in the build but not by too much. I have placed it at 50 as passively this should grant us a good amount when playing naturally. From here I have attached the Hands On and Ashes to Assets mod to grant us more super energy via the abilities being used. Ashes to Assets will see extensive use through the build so do be sure to make full use of your grenades as you can. Now as we have covered this subclass, weapons and stats usage, we can now move on to the next stage of the build which is how it plays and how everything is compiled. For head we have resilience, hands on, ashes to acid and bountiful world mod, arm we have unstoppable fusion rifle, overload bow and elemental orders mod, chest we have discipline, cacus of down at times 2 and explosive world maker mod, leg we have minor resilience, absolution, a fusion scavenger and protective light mod, bond with minor resilience, park with deconstruction and elemental charge mod. With the completion of the build you now have great grenades that will be continuous in both damage and duration, weapons that can counter all types of threats while also debuffing those for extra damage increase, and the amount of worlds you produce will be enough to get yours and your team's abilities flowing at all times, while also enhancing your personal defense some more. The setup is simple and does not require a lot of thinking to achieve the following goal, but as shown, the setup can be copied and pasted onto other classes or sort of pairings and you can gain the same effects as shown. This is important as not every content you play you'll want to go ahead and use a different setup all the time, and I know there are many players out there who just want a streamlined build that can carry them wherever they go and not need to worry about needing to have this or that gear. This is kind of a love letter to those specific players in mind. From testing this build in this week's Grandmaster, I've seen it put in its fair share of damage and survive the most lethal encounters around. Champions such as the Unstoppables were a major pain to face at times, but once stunned I could apply my debuff and my grenades on top of them, and within this short time frame I could take off one to two third of their health and also regain all my grenade energy back depending on how the encounters went. The same went for taking on the minor and major combatants who were absolutely brutal to face and avoid. But with the extra defenses applied, I could survive them just long enough to get a few hits in with my grenades or fusion rifle and watch as they all disappear into dust. Hell, just using the setup against a boss solo with your super and then use a sword with it can solely destroy them in seconds and this is what I live for. 
I will admit that the build might not be useful in Master Tier content where the combatants you face come in as gauntlets and you don't have a lot of cover available, since you'll need to make wells to get that extra bit of protection. But except from that, this build is worthy for its weight in gold. You can do a lot of things with the setup and it will carry you far and wide no matter what Master Tier content or Grandmasters you play in. I personally believe this build for a returning vet or even a new light with the right gear is one of the best builds that they can use if they want to get up to date with the game and not worry so much of needing to have max gear to even do damage. Your grenades, weapons and mods can hold their own surprisingly well and just one grenade or one shot from your Telesto is all you need to get the ball rolling. Now imagine how absolutely broken this build will be once the Void update comes. You'll probably thank me later for this. Well, I hope so. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you did that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.